Muy buenas tardes, casi noche ya, aquí en París, excelentísimos ministros, viceministros y representantes de gobiernos centroamericanos y de República Dominicana, destacados representantes de instituciones técnicas y científicas y público en general que nos acompañan. Les damos la más cordial bienvenida al lanzamiento de la declaratoria, declaratoria pública de ministros centroamericanos y República Dominicana para apoyar e impulsar la producción agrícola sostenible basada en el enfoque de agricultura climáticamente inteligente. Esta iniciativa pretende integrar los esfuerzos institucionales e intersectoriales en una agenda común para hacer frente a las amenazas del cambio climático. En la mesa nos acompaña María Elena Semedo, directora general adjunta de la FAO, Bruce Campbell, di director de SICAF, José Sebastián Marcucci, ministro de Agricultura, Ganadería y Alimentación de Guatemala, don Luis Felipe Arauz, ministro de Agricultura y Ganadería de Costa Rica, Emil Frison de Bioversity, Tony Simmons, director general del World Agroforestry Center, José Joaquín Campos, director general de CATIE, y Yuka, siempre me cuesta su apellido, Yuka, Yuka Osokainen, que nos acompaña de, de Climate Technology Center and Network. Bienvenidos a esta declaratoria. Eh, para nosotros es un gusto contar con un panel tan, tan destacado. Eh, a continuación, el ministro de Agricultura de Costa Rica, Luis Felipe Arauz, nos explica los alcances de este evento. Adelante, don Luis Felipe. I will um, speak in English. Yes. Um, I believe we don't have um, sim simultaneous translation, so uh, I will do my best. Uh, first of all, this declaration, it is a, a unanimous agreement of the Central American Agricultural Council, which is the agricultural body for the uh, Secretariat for the uh, Central American integration. So it's an official body that is um, made up by the ministers of Central American countries, including also Panama, Belize, and Dominican Republic, plus the rest of uh, the all uh, Cent Central American countries. Why do we want to adopt an approach of climate smart agriculture in Central America? There are several reasons for that. First, Uh, we have measurable impacts of climate change in Central America, and it has been manifest in the past two years with a severe drought in the dry corridor of Central America and a severe flooding in the Caribbean uh, area. We have common uh, challenges because we need to move on from emergency and relief management towards adaptation to climate change. We uh, think that this is not going to be an emergency anymore. It's going to be an adaptation thing. Uh, also, we have common vulnerabilities in the rural areas of our countries. We have the need to increase productivity, and we have a responsibility with the planet and with the future generations. We think that if we adopt climate smart agriculture, we can become a demonstration laboratory that would permeate in other regions of the world. We, ha we want to set an example. Even though we're a small region, uh, we don't account for a whole lot of the emissions of the world, but I think we want to prove that it can be done. What is the concept we are embracing of uh, climate smart agriculture? We, if we go to the components of the, of the phrase, of course we want a agriculture that mitigates uh, climate change through better uh, storage of carbon and also reduction of emissions of greenhouse gases. But we want an agriculture that adapts to climate change, that does not suffer or is able to 
resist or to recover, to be resilient to climate change and be able to recover and adapt. But also we want an agriculture that keeps increasing productivity in the face of climate change. So we have a triple challenge and that's why we think that climate smart agriculture is the way to go. From a theoretical standpoint, from a purely agroecological standpoint, if we look at uh, agroecosystems and the dynamics of agroecosystems, many of the greenhouse gas emissions are inefficiencies of the system. We can view the production of nitrous oxide as nitrogen that was put in by the farmer. He paid money for that, but it didn't end up in protein or in plant growth but went to the atmosphere to contribute to global warming. So that's an efficiency. Same if cows emit methane. That methane is carbon that didn't end up making meat or milk. So we think that we need to uh, tackle those inefficiencies of the system. We need to capture carbon also, and capture carbon needs to translate in increased productivity. Because soils rich in organic matter, in organic carbon, produce better roots and better, um, better use of fertilizers, for example. <coughs> so that would increase productivity if we capture carbon in the soil. Better water use is a good adaptation measure, and it not only allows us to use a scarce natural resource like water in a better way, but also allows, if we use it properly, and we use it as a means to apply the fertilizers with precision, a way to reduce greenhouse gases and also increase productivity. Another example, if we plant trees in pasture lands, we have data from Katje that show the trees, under the trees, temperature is four to five degrees less than in full sun exposure. And that is an adaptation measure to climate change, but also trees sequester carbon, and so it's a mitigation strategy. But not only that, cows suffer less heat stress and productivity, productivity goes up by 10 to 15 percent. That is in experimental data. So we need to increase productivity through eco-efficiency. But in order to achieve that as a means to reduce poverty, to increase food security, to increase, enhance sustainable development, in order to do all that, we need knowledge. So knowledge management is a key component of climate smart agriculture. So that is, going back to the de definition, the word smart to us means knowledge intensive agriculture. So we need to move from an agriculture that is intensive in chemical inputs <laughs> to an agriculture that is intensive in knowledge in order to be able to um, really contribute with the environment and with the climate. So that, those are the reasons we want to promote climate smart agriculture. Having said that, with that framework, I would uh, pass on the microphone to my friend Sebastian Marcucci, the Minister of Agriculture of Guatemala, who will speak on behalf of the Central American Agricultural Council, and he's going to read the declaration. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I learned the declaration. Agricultural Council of Central America, regional declaration to promote climate smart agriculture. The ministers of agriculture of Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, and the Dominic Dominican Republic, countries that make up the Central American Integration System, SICA, in the ordinary meeting of Agricultural Council 
of Central American eh, CAC celebrated in San Salvador, El Salvador, August eh, 20, 2015, whereas one, SICA members countries constitute a geographic region that is highly vulnerable to the effect of climate change, in which the agricultural sector suffers recurrent losses and damage and faces serious difficulties in the adapting to climate change. Two, the agricultural sector, which includes crops, livestock, fisheries, and aquaculture and forestry, is a key player in the econ economies, economies of SICA member countries and a support of for rural development, with the fundamental role of, of guaranteeing food and nutritional security in the regions, as will uh, contribute contributing to the conservation of the important heritage of, of uh, biodiversity and other natural, natural resources. Three, SICA countries have advanced in the adop adoption of regional policies and strategies, national laws and policies, sectorial and the intersectoral agreements and the creation of regional working groups and other ent entities specialized in climate change, technology and innovation, territorial rural development and food and nutritional security that favor the adoption of climate smart agriculture. Four, successful experience, ex experiences and lessons learned in the regions develop, developed by various uh, actors include farmers, foresters, aqu aquaculturists and fishermen can contribute to the mitigation, creation of resilience and adaptation, uh, adaptation to climate change and favor food and, nut and, nutri and nutritional security. The regions also has a past history of and a great opportunities of south south cooperation, everything from the similarities and complementarities that exist between member countries. Five, in the Placencia Declaration emitted in the ordinary meeting for the heads of state government of SICA members countries on December uh, 17, uh, 20, 2014, it was agreed to instruct the institutions of the system linked to climate change to participate actively, actively in the process of the construction of the proposal of the SICA regions for the COP21 to be held in Paris to be led by the Central American Commission for Environment and Development. The, Agriculture, the Agricultural Council of Central America within the framework of the COP21 therefore declares, uh, one, the willingness of the Council to integrate the interinstitutional and intersectorial efforts to face the threats of climate change with a shared agent, promoting sustainable production through the concept of climate smart agriculture as an option for uh, increasing the productivity of crop, livestock, fisheries, aquaculture, and forestry, creating greater resilience and supporting adaptation to climate change with the goal of improving food and nutritional sec security will contributing to the mitigation of climate change. Second, the commitment to formulate and promote a shared vision based on six pillars, adaptation, environmental and social sustainability, productivity and competitiveness, food and nutritional security, recuperation of the great, the degraded lands 
and integrated management of water and soil. Third, the political will to promote strate strategies and uh, plans, creating, promote, promoting, and strict, strengthening policies and many management plans to reduce climate related risk to the agricultural, livestock, fisheries, ag aquaculture, and forestry sectors. Four, the, decisi the decis decision to promote regional alliance between public, private, academic, and social sex sector to strengthen knowledge management related to CSA. Five, the interest of the Council in promoting invest, urging cooperation between institutions for international cooperation and international financial institutions to stimulate climate smart agriculture. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Minister Marcucci, to share to us the key points about the, this important document. So uh, the, the nec next step is how the research, how the knowledge can contribute to support the government policies about this. So it's the turn of the panelists. Uh, we want to listen um, 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 Maria Elena Semedo, she wants to talk to us about the contribution of the investigation for this kind of uh, government policies. Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Excellencies, Ministers, Vice Ministers, members of the panels, panel, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a great pleasure for me to be here today in this uh, special moment where we are launching this declaration of the Central America regarding the support to climate smart agriculture. And why is this so important for FAO? I don't know if you, you are aware, but the climate smart agriculture concept was launched by FAO. It's an FAO concept launched in 2010. What was the objective of creating this concept? was exactly the idea is to see climate change is threatened food security, is threatened agriculture, but so far we have, we have having approaches to deal with agriculture alone, to deal with food security alone, but why not to have an integrated concept? And then FAO created this concept, as the minister said, we call it climate smart agriculture, but smart is because is a knowledge-based concept. And the concept has three pillars. One is to increase productivity. The second one is increase res resilience to facing climate change and increasing livelihoods. And the third point is bringing adaptation and when possible, bringing mitigation through co-benefits. And after the launching of this concept, is a, co is a concept which has five years and it has been evolving. It's not a, a concept we have too much science behind, but we are trying to bring knowledge and to, to have a context specific. When I say a, con a context specific, we want it to link knowledge to policy makers and to have a ground policy decisions where we can have actions, we can have programs, but it has to be f supporting the smallholder farmers and supporting women and youth, they are the most vulnerable. After the launch of this concept, last year in September, it was created the Global Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture. The alliance was launched by Ban Ki-moon in September last year. And so far, we have more than 130 members of the Global Alliance. They are uh, governments, private sector, and civil society. And now FAO is promoting not only the Global Alliance, we host the, the facilitation unit or the secretariat of the Global Alliance, and we are promoting regional alliance. Because as I said, the alliance has to be linked to, to the context they are serving, to the demands, to the needs, to the priorities of the regions. 
And last year was created the African Region Alliance. We have the West Africa Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture, the North America Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture, and today we have the Central America Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture. And it's really an honor for us to expand these linkages where we have global alliance, or maybe let me go uh, starting by the regional or sub-regional alliance, linking or contributing to the global alliance. What FAO can offer to this alliance? I think FAO has a lot to offer to the alliance. We are a knowledge organization. We can share with you all of this knowledge. We can share information. We can share data. We can facilitate the linkage between this regional alliance with the other regional and global alliance. <coughs> we can provide training <coughs> to the members of this alliance. We can provide training <coughs> to the countries. And as I said, we can facilitate the linkage with the global alliance uh, action groups. The global alliance has uh, already an action group on knowledge an action group on enable environment, and an action group in investment. And I think FAO can facilitate this linkage. We can create this platform whereby all the alliance can be together, can discuss, can le learn from each other, and we can bring at scale best practices from one region to another. And I believe this is what we can offer, and we welcome this initiative, and be assured that FAO will be fully supporting the alliance and we are involved in, in the success of your alliance as we are linked to the other similar alliance. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marilena Semedo. Now the time of uh, Emil Frisson. Thank you. <coughs> First of all, uh, I have to apologize on behalf of Anne Tutwiler, the Director General of Biodiversity International, who couldn't be here with us. Um, but Biodiversity <coughs> is very pleased to see this initiative of a regional declaration on climate smart agriculture. Uh, and one of the uh, messages that we've heard throughout both this global forum, but also more broadly relating to climate change, is that if we want to make a difference, collaboration is really essential. Collaboration between countries, collaboration between different sectors, collaboration between different categories of stakeholders. And I think this is what this uh, initiative is trying to uh, put in place and facilitate. Uh, Biodiversity International is, is a research center dealing with agricultural biodiversity and the use of that diversity to improve people's livelihoods. And I think uh, in doing that, our agenda is really uh, an important ingredient uh, and contributor to climate smart agriculture. Indeed, diversity is an essential ingredient of an adaptation strategy in building resilience uh, to climate change in uh, the system, but <coughs> also in mitigation. Uh, diverse systems are better at, at um, carbon sequestration, uh, improving soil health for improved productivity, etc that contribute to, to mitigation. Um, Biovest International will be very pleased to participate fully in uh, this initiative. We have activities in most countries of the region. We have a regional office based in Costa Rica, uh, hosted uh, by uh, Katie. And uh, we have several programs, including specific programs on climate change. And I just want to cite one on Seeds for Needs, which is to make available to farmers directly <coughs> varieties for them to test their adaptation to uh, the different environments and thereby uh, increasing the opportunity to um, use that diversity in uh, addressing climate change. Uh, I am very pleased uh, to be here to uh, contribute to the, the launch of this initiative, which I wish a great success, and we will be uh, a partner in, in supporting this. Thank you. Now, please, Mr. Tony Simons. <laughs> now.
this document is fantastic. It's got no square brackets. <laughs> no alternate paragraphs. No opposing parties. And it's only two pages long. <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations to Central America. <laughs> this document is so important that on the second line you see the country of Nicaragua. But Nicaragua is not submitting an INDC, but they are signing up to Climate Smart Agriculture. So that exemplifies its importance at the national level. ICRAF, uh, like Biodiversity, is one of the international organizations, a member of the CGR, and we wholeheartedly support this. We have a regional office uh, based in Katia, in Turialba as well, from which we work in the other countries of the region. Climate Smart Agriculture is about climate, it's about carbon, it's about agriculture. Central America is the only region in the world where you have more than 50 species of tree whose, whose common name is carbon. So a great appreciation of that link between energy and food and diversity. <coughs> One of the most diverse geographic, social, biological regions in the world. It is, it is the home of maize, of tomatoes, of avocados, of chilies, of beans, and most importantly, the tequila agave. <laughs> In speaking with colleagues from the Global Alliance on Climate Smart Agriculture, and, and, and equally of relevance to you is how we can get a, the term across, because it may not translate particularly well into Spanish, but how important is it for the country, for the subnational authorities, for the individual campesinos to be climate smart? And if we can turn this around to the pillars of making smallholder agriculture more profitable, making the entire farming sector, large scale, medium scale, small scale, more sustainable, and making the entire rural landscape more resilient in the face of climate change, people will understand what climate smart agriculture is. And you have one of the best opportunities with this political commitment to show the world how you can simultaneously combine intensification with diversification. And in that endeavor, we stand fully behind you. Thank you. Mr. Bruce Campbell. Uh, so I lead the CGI program on climate change, CCAFs, and we work with all the 15 centers and many, many partners. So I, I just want to make three quick points. We really need action on the ground. And to get that action on the ground, we need the incentive systems, we need the national policies, and we need the regional frameworks and cooperation. So like everybody else, I really congratulate SICA on putting this in place. The second is, is about the concept that you've used of climate smart agriculture in your, in your document. And I wish I had written it. It's brilliant. It's, it's really nice. Um, it's a broad framing, it includes social sustainability, competitiveness, nutritional security, and many other things, and I think that's the, really the way to go, not a narrow conception of climate smart agriculture. <coughs> and the third point I want to make is about your fifth uh, point on, on the second page, about urging cooperation between institutions. And like others, we are really ready to partner. Uh, we work from Climate smart villages, that's at the farm level, to the national policy processes, to the regional policy processes, and to the global processes where we do research and engagement. We are funded by development agencies, and our primary objective is development outcomes. So all our scientists are really behind an outcome-oriented research. In order to do that, it has to be done through partnerships. And so that's partnerships with the national agencies. We've worked in Costa Rica on the scenario planning, for a part of the process going into the uh, INDCs. We've worked in Guatemala at the policy level. We work, we've got climate smart villages in Central, uh, Central America. And we don't try and do it all ourselves. I actually sit in Denmark. I can't do it by myself, that's for certain. And so we use partners, and this person's a great partner. 
And so Katia runs many of the climate smart villages that we work through in, in Latin America. So I think this is the kind of framework that can really stimulate this action and cooperation. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Juca. Thank you very much, um, uh, esteemed honorable ministers and, and the colleagues. Um, climate Technology Center and Network is, a, is an operative body established by the Conference of the Parties uh, of the Climate in Cancun already five years ago, but it took some time to put it uh, rolling and, and it has been operative now for uh, uh, its second year. Um, we are working uh, uh, for the national designated entities of climate technology, which already 150 countries have nominated, so we are having uh, government customers. But uh, all the requests from the developing countries can come from any institution or company or NGO, uh, just as they come through the government entity. And, and indeed, Latin America we are, and, and Central America, we are already working with uh, Costa Rica, with uh, Honduras and, and, and Dominican Republic on their requests on different climate technology issues. As a resource, we have, of course, United Nations Environment Program and UNIDO, which are our host agencies, but also, <coughs> also CATIE, ICRAF uh, uh, are our consortium partners who are doing, preparing and, and, and implementing the request response processes and indeed we are uh, already joining with the FAO on, 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 on looking at uh, all levels of, of collaboration. Um, we have already 70 uh, requests on the table and we are anticipating maybe 100 more requests coming from developing countries to us next year. Um, on this, this particular issue I'm, I'm extremely uh, happy to see this kind of collaboration uh, emerging and I congratulate the ministers of agriculture in Central America to, to, to show this leadership of, of commitment uh, in climate smart agriculture. Uh, we have already acknowledged the, the extreme challenges your region is facing in climate change and, uh, and indeed uh, looking at the, at the risks of, of agricultural production. So we stand ready to support um, Central America and, and, uh, and your, your uh, coalition in strengthening uh, climate resilient agricultural practices and, and technologies. Um, and that is happening on, on your request. That means that, that you are the ones who defined the problem and then look at what our institution as a climate technology center can, ha how we can help, help you. And we are happy to support, uh, for example, identification of piloting uh, or scaling up uh, uh, proven uh, technology solutions. And especially if they are from south to south, that would be very interesting and helpful. Um, we also are looking for that, what, how can we engage the private sector in this endeavor? How can we, we reach them uh, so that they will be part of the solution, as well as bringing any, any kind of climate uh, programs and projects towards the, the maturity and towards the implementation so that we can get attraction by the financial institutions, both in, inside of the convention and outside of the convention. So we are happy to, to be uh, working with you on this. Thank you very much. Now Dr. Campos will be in the participation of the panelists. And Dr. Campos, maybe you will share with the audience uh, a sweet example that we have here about the, how the, the academy can contribute. Yes, where, where is that sweet example? Is there? The, the, that, is, okay. that is here. Okay, is this working? No, is this working? This is yes. working. Okay, before I start, and we're going to share with the panelists, and then we will accept requests from you in the audience about uh, a good example of climate smart uh, agriculture. It's chocolate bar produced from in Katie, based in our general plasm collections, established actually in, in collaboration with FAO 70 years ago, uh, when it was ICA. And done through uh, breeding, uh, the, the program uh, that produced clones that are very much productive, uh, resistant to monilia, and also good quality. They were actually, uh, three of the clones were recognized uh, uh, by the Salon du Chocolat here in Paris because of producing good chocolate. And so after this is to break uh, my eyes and sweet the, the, the end of the afternoon, we are about to finish right on time. So I'm, I'm very enthusiastic, really moved about this initiative, which is actually led by the ministers. 
The ministers here represented uh, by Minister Arauz, Minister Mar uh, Mercucci, Mercucci uh, they have a tremendous responsibility as policymakers in driving the agricultural sector in, in, a, in times which are historic. And uh, they have, with this declaration, decided to work together, and not only to work together, but also to invite other organizations represented here. And I would like to mention that o other organizations that are not here today are IICA, but they are involved, uh, OIRSA, WRI, and Walter Vergara is here, and they are committed also to contribute, and uh, 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 WRI is leading a very important also initiative, along with many partners, which is called the 20 by 20 to restore 20 million hectares by now is more than 20 million hectares, 28, and with uh, private investors as well. SIAT is another partner, uh, and it's an open partnership. So, uh, and I think uh, this is what we need to work together. The Minister of Environment from Puerto Rico, who is here, she, uh, she just mentioned the interest of Puerto Rico also to join this initiative. We need a lot, it's been said already, in these times when we need impact in, in uh, fast, it's only through collaboration. It's we have, if we think about the resources that we have together, uh, it's amazing the, the, the amount of resources, the capacities, the, the influence that we can make together. And still, I think uh, we need to invite the private sector as well, uh, as has been said uh, by Yuka. So, Kat has been working with all of you, and I think all of us work among ourselves. So, this is a good start. We are already working, but now we have a shared vision. And I have there are lots of discussions about climate smart agriculture, if I like it, if I, I don't like it. I actually like it. Anyway, I think it has the potential to transform a very needed sector, which is agriculture. We will always need food. We will always need fiber, fuel, fodder. We'll always need agriculture, but we need a different kind of agriculture. And I think uh, in this, which is the most vulnerable region in the world, agriculture being one of the most vulnerable sectors, and, and poor farmers being probably the most vulnerable people in the world. Uh, and I think this is a, a, an amazing initiative. Uh, just to close, I'm really thankful. Uh, and I think uh, it's been really successful in a, such a short time to put together this initiative, a great dec declaration from the ministers and the, the commitments from all of you, all of us. But the work just began. So uh, I hope that next year, in the next GLF, we could come back and report what we have done uh, through this initiative. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the panelists. Uh, thanks for the Oops. Thanks for the ministers. Uh, thanks for the audience to uh, be here and share with us this extraordinary news for the future of the agriculture in Central America. Thank you. Bye-bye. Voy a hacerles una fotografía.